Welcome to Emily's Projection Booth. In this series, I will be recommending a new film each week and sharing my thoughts and reflections on the film. And today in our first episode, we have The Half of It, directed by Alice Wu. The film tells the story of a girl named Ellie Chu who is insanely smart and writes all the essays for her peers in her high school. She meets this dense but well-intentioned guy, Paul Munsky, who asks Ellie to help him write love letters for the most popular girl in the school, Aster Flores. However, the twist is that Ellie is actually in love with Aster, and then the story unfolds from there. So I watched this film at like 4 in the morning because I couldn't sleep and had nothing else to do, and I thought this film was so heartwarming and so charming, so I would definitely recommend it. And in this video, I'm just going to talk about a few things that I think this film did a really great job of addressing. So first of all, obviously, this is a coming-of-age story. It is about this high school girl who eventually learns to accept herself, love herself, and go after what she wants in life. But I think it is also unique in the sense that it's not entirely about oh, getting the guy or getting the girl in the end. It's, that's not entirely the end goal. And it's not really exactly about oh, getting into the dream college or achieving like a certain like professional goal. I think this is more about your internal struggle with yourself. So Astor Flores said a quote in the film, I'm like a lot of people, which makes me kind of no one. And I feel like this quote just perfectly sums up what being a teen feels like because when you're in high school, like you often feel really isolated, not seen, not heard or not understood. And you're trying to figure out who you are and you want to make friends, but the only way to do so is by becoming other people and then being like them so that they could like you. And I think the film basically really honed in on this very specific characteristic of being a teenager and basically illustrated this process of becoming visible to other people, but also to yourself. Because in the opening shots of the film, when we first get introduced to the character Ellie Chu, the director purposely only used close-up shots of the character, for example, only showing her shoulder or her face or even just a reflection of her face instead of showing her body as a whole because she wanted to convey this feeling that Ellie didn't think of herself as a protagonist of her own life. She is always this character who is on the sideline, who is kind of invisible and everything she does is for other people and not necessarily for herself. Even later on in this scene where Paul and Aster are eating at a diner and Ellie is sitting in the car outside the diner and texting Aster for Paul, we don't really feel like Ellie is the main character because she is just on the side and we're also so used to seeing this trope of the main romantic couple sitting in a diner and talking to each other. So this film really illustrated Ellie as this invisible sidekick that we don't really see and that is why we want to root for her because she is this invisible underdog and we want her to be heard and we want her to find happiness in life because she seems to be suppressing herself all the time. And speaking of this diner scene, I think a really interesting directorial choice that Alice Wu made is that she chose to just show the text messages as graphics on screen rather than showing like the phone directly every single time. And I feel like that is a decision that almost all directors have to make if they want to make a film about teenagers today because everyone uses a phone, that is how they communicate. And sometimes it is really difficult to figure out how to translate this virtual communication into a visual representation that is the most clear to the audience. And I specifically remember in a Bo Burnham interview when he was talking about the way he made 8th grade, he made sure to not ex use that many text bubbles on screen. He decided to show the electronic devices directly because to him, he wanted to emphasize the aspect of social media in his story. And since 8th grade deals a lot with the relationship between teenagers and social media, it made a lot of sense that Bo Burnham wanted to, for example, focus more on the way that the light of a phone screen is reflected on the character's face rather than what exactly people are talking about on social media. However, in the half of its case, I think it makes a lot more sense to be showing graphics rather than just showing like phones directly because in this film it's not exactly about the role of social media even though it is obviously a part of teenagers life but it is more about the words that you say with it and a lot of people compare the story to modern day Cyrano de Bergerac because it doesn't really matter like what form you're writing your love letters in. It could be an email, it could be text, it could be like handwritten letters, but what matters here are the words. And Ellie basically turned these words into her weapon and her best defense, and that is how we see her grow and change throughout the story. So I think this film is really just about taking up space and speaking up for herself, because as we can see through Ellie, even though she is not the most 
noticeable or most like typical main character material but her voice and her words have been the one thing that is the most powerful throughout the entire film. And next I want to talk about how this film addresses the Asian American experience. And I think an interesting question to think about here is what does it mean to be truly represented? What I liked about this film is that it didn't really over exaggerate like her Chinese Americanness because I feel like a lot of the times, a lot of big studios in Hollywood or some other production companies, diversity has become commercialized, like it's something that to attract audience and to prove that you care rather than actually showing like what the story is about. But I feel like true representation shouldn't always be about, oh wow, this is a film with an Asian lead. Like I hope one day when we see an Asian lead in a film or a TV show, we're no longer surprised like, oh, this is an Asian lead. We just see this person as a lead and it's just someone that we can look up to and really commonly seen. And I think there are two things that are pretty uniquely Asian American and I guess specifically Chinese American. And the first thing that kind of comes to mind is this sense of stoicism because I feel like, especially in Chinese American families, I feel like it is not as common to express your affection that explicitly. Like we don't really say I love you to each other. It's not like it's taboo and you can't say it. It's just that I think the way that this culture of people express love is just very different like you if you love someone you just go ahead and do that thing to prove that you love that other person and show that you care rather than just saying the words and i think that is really reflected in ellie's relationship with her dad they've never really said anything super affectionate to each other but you can tell how much they care about each other and they do have a really meaningful relationship and there's this scene that always repeats in the film where Ellie's dad sits in front of the TV and watching foreign films to learn English and then Ellie just sits next to him and then they talk about oh, the best part of the film and it's just really short conversations but you can tell that the love is there and also there's this scene of Ellie's dad making dumplings and Ellie's like dad why are you making so many dumplings and then he basically said oh yeah because I want to send you off to college and you should bring dumplings along with you on the way. And Ellie was surprised that her dad was supportive of her choice to go to college because while she is still in high school, she has been like the main support system for her dad. So she felt like she had to stay to take care of her dad because Ellie's mom passed away. And then Ellie's dad basically has been in this constant state of depression. But then Ellie's dad says, we didn't come here so you could be like me. We came here so you could be like your mother. And I feel like this quote just embodies the sense of responsibility that is embedded in the children of immigrants because Immigrants came to the U.S. with a mission. They left their home country because they came to the U.S. with hopes that they could build a better life here for themselves and more importantly for their children. So I think children of immigrants are not only carrying their own hopes and aspirations, but they're also carrying what their parents hope for them to do. And I feel like especially in Chinese culture where family is such an integral value to everyone, I think that is even more deeply embedded in Chinese Americans where you feel like you have to take responsibility for the family, you know, take care of your parents. And I wholeheartedly agree with these values. And I think that's why this film did a wonderful job of like putting that into Ellie's personality and have the way that she makes decisions and how she plans out her life for herself all be centered around who she is as a Chinese American. And last but not least, I want to talk about how this film addresses the meaning of love. So the film opens up with this quote from Plato which says, love is simply the name for the desire and pursuit of the whole. So immediately the film builds this hypothesis that life is all about finding your other half and that is how you find happiness. And in the beginning, the very beautiful stop motion animation that we see actually foreshadows what happened on later in the film during this process of finding love. For example, Astor's flower painting was referenced in the beginning animation. And later on when Astor and Ellie are floating in the water, the water is also referenced in the beginning animation. So this film seems to be setting itself up to be this very typical rom-com of trying to find your significant other but that is where the twist in the film comes in it is actually about a very atypical love triangle and one of my favorite scenes from the film is the scene where Astor and Ellie are painting this mural together when they're talking about 
making the boldest stroke in a painting because Astrid is a painter. And the theory is that the difference between a good painting and a great painting is just five strokes. And basically that was the most philosophical flirting I've ever seen. They were just taking turns painting on the wall and exploring what it means to be making the boldest stroke, which is also obviously a metaphor for their love as well because they come from a very religious town and love like theirs is most likely frowned upon. And another scene that I really liked was when Ellie and Aster, they basically went on this little road trip together and they found this very secluded pool and they were just chilling there and talking about life. And I really liked how this film showcased the intellectual intimacy between the two people instead of always focusing on the physical affection. Like this was a, I think, PG-13 movie. There really wasn't anything explicit in here. I feel like that's so rare to find these days, especially when you watch a TV show featuring teenagers like Riverdale or Gossip Girl, and you're just like, are they really teenagers? Or like, is this all they are capable of? Like, do they not have brains to have a deeper level of connection beyond just physical intimacy? So I think that was really refreshing to see. And I think this film addressed the love between Ellie and Aster in the most beautiful way possible. And I bet it made a lot of people feel seen and heard because the Asian queer story is not something that we see every single day. But as Ellie Chu has said, love is being willing to ruin a good painting for a chance at a great one. Yeah, love is all about taking risks and being vulnerable and letting yourself get hurt. That is how you get love reciprocated to you. And what I loved about the ending is that it's not really about if Ellie and Aster end up together or if Ellie and Paul or Paul and Aster end up together. It's really just about making the boldest stroke, you know, making the move when you feel like you love someone and then just plunging into the world and let yourself be ready for the next adventure, which is what we see at the ending of the film. And I think in an interview with Alice Wu, she said that she always knew that she was going to end the film straight on with Ellie's face because in the beginning we only saw like the back of Ellie, but this is the character development that she wanted to illustrate in the end, showing that Ellie has changed. She is now ready to take on the world and she has a whole life ahead of her to figure things out and it doesn't have to be now. The film doesn't really give you any answers, it just gives you hope and makes you look forward to what is next in your life. And yeah, that is all I want to say about the half of it. You can stream this film on Netflix. If you've already seen the film, I would love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below and also feel free to leave any suggestions for what film I should talk about next. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.